I agree. I think market research can be dangerous, dangerous thing to do yeah. if you don't do it well. Is it? There's a famous quote. I'm not sure who it was. I'm going to say it's Henry Ford because everything seems to be Henry Ford. But it's, you've if, gone if, on if, about if, him a lot recently. Uh, have I? Henry Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Yeah. Is he no nuns? No 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 no. no that was uh, Donald Rumsfeld. Donald Rumsfeld. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, it's the old faster horse thing. You've you've heard that. If you ask the common man what they want back in the day, a oh, pre car. Yeah, pre car. Yeah, yeah. Want a faster horse? Yeah, yeah. Do you actually want a faster horse? And it's that kind of. I think that's always the risk with market research mm. that. Sometimes you just Sometimes have to Sometimes people provide. don't necessarily know what they want. Yeah, because you, you were talking about something with a car as well earlier. Yeah, I was trying to think, around. and I was doing a bit of research quickly before to try and find the company. Um, but one of the flaws of market research is it, unless you, you're you very clear in terms of who your target market is and you go and ask that target market and understand deeply what it is that they want. One of the things that a car company did, I don't know the name, but they took a very broad approach. They asked, you know, very different demographics, people living in different areas, different economic statuses, and they kind of brought all this together and all the feedback together and stuck it in one car. And it just didn't, it didn't fly. It didn't, it didn't fly. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, because, because they had built stuff in for very affluent people that wanted like high speed cars. Mm. They built stuff in for like kind of lower demographic people that probably wanted comfort. And it just became like a hitch, hitch, hitch what's the word? Mishmash. Mishmash, mishmash, mishmash that's mishmash. the word. Yeah. A mishmash of different requirements. And so it didn't have an work, identity. Didn't work brilliantly for anybody. I think that's that's another example. Yeah, and I think um, again, it might be Rory Sutherland that said this, but um, sometimes people will actually tell the truth when you ask them what they want, um, yeah. <clears throat> or they don't. And and you know, more commonly, people usually just don't actually know what they really want or what they really need. It's true. Um, you know, if you bring, you might have experienced. I mean, not. We don't need to. It's not like. I'm not trying to throw any of our clients under the bus or anything, but you might have experienced it when you've been having meetings with clients mm. where some of the things that they want, you know that like they probably don't want that, but like they kind of almost feel pressured to come up with like, you know, information for you to then go away and build on. Mm. When you know, well, we've worked with X amount of companies. We know yeah. generally speaking, these are the top criteria that you need. And then maybe there's some like, stu- there's some sort of outlier stuff that you want to incorporate but probably usually you figure that out after further on the line mm. rather than saying oh from day one it should have 20 cup holders because like you know this one time me and my mates were in the car we all had two drinks and uh, yeah. it's like I, really annoying or whatever i think that's you, you raise an interesting point there because <clears throat> we definitely have there's a situation where you know we're um we're the experts so there's an element of you know I think there's an not an own like a hundred percent onus on us, but there's an onus on us to advise best practice, yeah. consider X, Y, or Z. But equally, that's fine, and you know we do that, and, and we say you know typically this is what our clients do, or this is what they ask for. But then you'll have some some clients that are absolutely insistent. I want this, 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 and this, mm. and we know. Do you know what? That's going to be an absolute nightmare to put together. Do you really need it? And often what we do do um, is is question how what's the percentage hmm. that you're that you need that for yeah yeah you know well we get six a year for us to deliver what that requirement is yeah you're not going to get return on your investment yeah, is yeah. it really that hmm. bad and it's it's at that point where you get them to start thinking because they come in with a very sort of belligerent sort of focused it must have all of these requirements yeah yeah and then when you kind of drill down um it's kind of like actually do you know what do you is it you know is there real value in delivering that rather than because often what what we find is that i think the perception is uh well you know the automation is going to do a hundred percent of everything it's not Mm. realistically and you know being sensible if it can do 80 percent 70 percent whatever the that figure is that's seventy percent more efficient than it was yeah, before we knocked on the door. Yeah, um, but you always get the the extreme, and you know I can be extreme in in some of the things you know outside of work that I and work sometimes <laughs> that I do. <laughs> but but it goes you know it goes from zero, so we, we didn't have any automation mm. to oh the idea of automation. Well, it needs to be hundred percent. Yeah, but it doesn't. You know, mm. and, and yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, it, it's it's the mentality, but it's an education piece, and I think. 
there is a responsibility on us to advise 